When people who knew me back then said, you wrote a book? We are just like, I was like, yeah. So, but I was really, now, mm -hmm. I really think I was born to write. It's crazy. It's, so it's like the floodgates have yes, opened, right? No, when I was writing, I took my time during um. No, because in the book you clearly share, you know, your perspective, all the things that yes. you have seen. Yes. But it's woven into the story. Yes. So that, you know, even the reader can yeah. can actually it's very, you know, opens your mind to yeah. all these things. You're like, Oh yeah. yeah. Okay, why do Thank I you. think this way? Why why as society do we yeah. try to put people in these boxes, in these yeah. rooms? So but I, I, yeah. I'm also just having a moment. <laughs> yes, so I didn't do literature. A lot of people, first of all, I thought you were writing like from back in school. No, but I did write a children's book when before was Ara. That? Maybe about 2018, because Malengo Foundation was featured on CNN Inside Africa, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and one of the things that CNN was particularly intrigued by was my narrative of using literature mm. to speak disability rights okay. and again for me it came from my nieces and nephews whom I love to death they are the best children in the world no everybody says that about their nieces and nephews but mine are really the best <laughs> and and um, one of the our directors at Malengo Foundation has albinism so he came home mm. and uh, usually, you know, we'd either meet in the office or things like that. But that time, I think it was a weekend. I wasn't feeling too great. There's something he needed to drop off. It wasn't so serious. So I said, yeah, no, come home. And my nieces and nephews were over and they had never seen a person with albinism before. And they, they, they really, really, really were stunned. Do you know, a lot of children are not exposed. Yes. Yeah. So and it's very they're important. nicest kids. Mm -hmm. But all of a sudden they became fidgety and uncomfortable. Uncomfortable. And they were looking at him. They're like, is he white? I said, no, he's not. He's black. His parents are black. Mm. But he's not black. I said, yes, he is black. His parents are black. You are the race of your parents. Mm -hmm. And I, I explained that simply I explained melanin and everything and then after the next time they saw him they were more mm. you know warm and I kept on thinking to myself if they never asked or if I never picked up that they were fidgety they would have developed whatever attitude they have mm -hmm. towards albinism and it would have stuck and we see that in adults exactly because we're talking about children who are not exposed there's so many adults who've grown up in a bubble exactly mm -hmm. so when you're walking with your child in the street and your child looks at a person in a wheelchair, the first thing they're going to do is look at you mm -hmm. to see how you're going to react. Yes, how you so react. if you also look away and not explain, mm -hmm. or if you stare in this really uncomfortable... Rush the child away rush the don't child. look there. Yes, mm -hmm. so they pick up on Which that. Which many parents do because they're uncomfortable. Exactly, mm -hmm. because they're uncomfortable, because their parents were uncomfortable mm -hmm. and the chain goes on. Mm -hmm. So I wrote a book, a children's book called A Pure and a Chain. And what it was, but it's more, I would say, instructional. It's more for a teacher in class. So you said, um, so the book is more for, for teachers? Yes, it's more to help a teacher to instruct in class about mm -hmm. how to teach about albinism rights. And not really albinism rights, but just difference and diversity. Mm. Um, so what it is, it's about the protagonists in the book are twins, about eight years, nine years old, Opio and Chen, and um, Opio was born with one leg and Achen was born with one hand. And they're from this town called Palisa, which is a town where I'm from, mm -hmm. uh, my father's from, the district my father's from. And they, you know, like their neighborhood because they've become accustomed to it. Mm -hmm. Everybody always knows they are different. And because everybody knows they're different, they're, they're part of the community. Yeah, part of the community. They don't feel. Yes. Mm -hmm. So the big issue comes in when the dad now gets a job in Sorority. So he's now they're moving to another town, mm -hmm. bigger town. The dad is going to work at, I think, the post office. So they have to go to a new school, a bigger school. Prior, they have been in a smaller school yes and opio is nervous and timid about the whole idea about being the different kid all over again a chin you know it's okay she's 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 more outgoing she's i made her more outgoing okay she's not as opio is more athletic but 
uh, Chen is stronger as a person. She's more outgoing. She's more like, here I am. This is who I am. You know, mm -hmm. get to know me. Ask me about my hand if you feel uncomfortable. So Pio is not okay with the whole situation. So they go to school and um, the mother is obviously worried because she knows her baby. She knows he's always timid in new situations. And they find Odongo. Odongo has albinism. Now Odongo is the smartest kid in the class. He's brilliant. He's a prefect. He's, you know, I made him, you know, <laughs> perfect kid. And Opio and Chen, even though they had disabilities themselves, they've never seen a person with albinism as well. Mm -hmm. So they are not the different kid in school. And they see a kid who is really different from them. But he's thriving. thriving and Opio is like, how is this how working out? So then they become friends and he tells them all about albinism. And then o Odongo, who has albinism, has siblings mm -hmm. who don't have any disability. And they all become friends and, you know, they walk home together and the mom is looking through the window and just happy to they realize they live close to each other and they you know and it kind of has this sweet ending of where like the mom is like friendship yes new. friendship and mm -hmm. you know he's now not so scared about mm -hmm. new new situations or circumstances it also teaches uh things like i rem i put in the book like odongo didn't never used to go out during lunchtime because of uh, albinism you advise yes, the yeah, hours the mm -hmm. yes um the times when the sun is really, really, you know, and it's hottest. It's really hot. So you should be out. I think it's after four, or uh, before be, eleven. Or before before eleven, mm -hmm. yes. But that period between eleven midday to two is really dangerous, even though you're wearing sunscreen. Mm -hmm. So I talked about sunscreen, you know, different things. So it's more instructional in the sense that I wanted the teacher to be able to talk about different issues, not just this person is different, but they are different in this way and you know their differences actually makes you what makes you similar and I wrote that book and I felt like okay but it wasn't like I was thinking to myself that I'm really going to be a writer it was more I was writing and I was doing work on behalf of my Lingo Foundation mm -hmm. at the time at the time yeah because this is really in line with the foundation's work because the foundation has three priority areas, children, mm -hmm. girls, and inclusive economies. So actually the fashion show that everybody knows about Hot Pink mm -hmm. is under the inclusive economies priority area. Uh -huh. okay. Yes, because we want to have decent work for all persons, regardless of ability, using fashion as our industry of choice. Mm -hmm. So as models, as designers, etc., etc. et cetera. Mm -hmm. And um, so this Malengo Tales, is an activity, the book is called Malengo Tales, is an activity under the children priority area. So whose idea was it first to, to write, write the book? Me. So you're just like, oh, okay, I need to do this. I need to do to this support. because Malengo already has its initiatives for children. Mm. So I felt that it would be great to complement um, its initiatives when we go to the schools, to talk to children about difference, about diversity. I felt that a book would be um, better suited. I actually thought about collaborating with a writer an already established writer mm -hmm. to write the book and you know we work together like a partnership with Malengo then I thought to myself and I but said I can do this right I can what I can do this <laughs> but it was a great learning experience mm -hmm. and then I started to also start to think about who am I post Malengo mm. Imagine coming home to a vacation each day, to a place of pure serenity, a place of pure luxury for you to entertain and unwind. At Jakana Heights, dreams come true. Take your pick from spacious one, two, or three bedroom apartments and luxurious four bedroom penthouses built to international standards with fine, exceptional finishing. Located on Conge Hill, Buziga, with incredible views and a fresh breeze from the nearby Lake Victoria. It's a place for your body, soul, and mind with a wide array of amenities. Contact us for more information. Jakana Heights, Luxury Hilltop Living.
I started to also start to think about who am I post Malengo? Mm. Because I always say the greatest success story is you have to leave your organization. Mm -hmm. When you're long gone, my hope is Malengo Foundation would we'll still continue. be here. Mm -hmm. So who am I going to be when I leave Malengo? Because I have to leave Malengo at some point. So you started Malengo right after you came back from university? Yes, a little okay. while. Not immediately after, maybe a couple mm -hmm. of years. Maybe okay. a year or two. After. So were you already working somewhere else? Yes, and, mm -hmm. yes, yes. My parents own a school. Ah. So I family business and mm -hmm. junior, so okay. it's family business. So I, I work. Okay. I was so that ties there. into the children. Yes, and the, okay. yes. So I've mm -hmm. always been around children mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. It's a nursery and primary school. Uh -huh. So they took the two curriculums, Cambridge and UNEB, and I run the Cambridge school currently okay. up to now. And then mm -hmm. my sister runs the UNEB school. Ah, exactly. Okay, okay. So I was already working, and but I knew I was still doing a lot of community work. Mm -hmm. And on social media, I was saying to people, guys, we can do this, we can help, we can help. Then after the third of Biden, I said, no, you know, I should start. Um, and I wanted a foundation because a, a foundation is, is a home of ideas. It's, it's people bringing different people who have the same vision mm. um, together. More, of course, it's in its authentic form and organization. But I felt I wanted it to be called a foundation because I wanted it to be more about bringing different ideas. Okay. You Together. started that pretty young, I would yes. say. Yes. How was the response? Like, if you were to look at your friends, yes. your social circles, yes. how was the response? The response was great. Mm -hmm. Shocking, because again, like I said, not many people knew my background. Um, they knew me, oh, Michelle, she likes, because I used to dance a lot in school. She likes dancing, she likes shoes, she likes, so they, they saw she me. She likes shoes. She likes shoes. <laughs> Any shoe company, please. I am happy to be a bastard. Just give me free shoes. Oh my goodness. So yes, no. Mm -hmm. um, people knew one side of me. Again, mm. I never used to speak about it. about what I really used so to So some people were shocked. Yeah, people were like, like oh, what? what? Michelle? <laughs> Going into communities, helping children, mm -hmm. taking children for operations and all these things. Mm -hmm. It was very new. Mm. People close to me, my family were not shocked okay my sister i remember said to me uh one of my sisters mabel she's like i see you on a pulpit speaking about something you're passionate about um she's a career guidance she did carry guidance mm -hmm. she's called mabel and she was telling me i see you you know more like advocating for something hmm. i said no i'm going to work in a bank no <laughs> <laughs> and then she was uh, in uni. We had this bust up. I thought, you think you know everything? That's your problem. You think you know everything? <laughs> I'm not going to become. A, I'm not going to become an advocate of anything. I am going to work in a bank. I'm going to finish my degree. Then I'm going to go and do my masters in business and my MBA. Oh, so it was, was all like it was all in your mind. You're like, yeah. I have a plan, and this yes. is my plan. Yes, I was like, I'm going to end up in either insurance or banking. So I told her I'm going to end up in Old Mutual, or San Lamo, or if not, Stan Bick or whatever. But I knew like my whole. So what changed? How Everything changed. The shift, when? When I finished my uni mm. and my sister spoke to me and they said, even actually my brother Marlin said so. He said, don't go straight to do your MBA. Okay. Take some time, work, mm -hmm. think about it, mm. then, you know you decide even if it's in finance finance is broad you may not want to do an mba you might want to do something very mm, specific that was great advice yes. i think mm -hmm. then i started the foundation and, and then you're then like finance what <laughs> finance what sure now i'm writing books <laughs> so it's just like it's all over it's like then i started to really think about the fact that there are things that even malengo foundation doesn't know it's funny, I don't see myself as Malengo Foundation. I really don't. We mm -hmm. have a great team of directors, diverse across all abilities, very intelligent people mm -hmm. who are responsible for most of these projects and activities. Mm -hmm. And I come on as the face and then I'm like, yeah, I give this great speech after an event and everybody claps for me. And great, it's wonderful. I put in my part, but I really am standing on the shoulders of really, You're really, looking really at, yes, yeah. remarkable people. It's a youth-inspired organization. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to be youth forever. 
Okay. Some of even the things they are talking about I'm incorporated. Because <laughs> this is Uganda. No, Even at 55, you no. no, no. <laughs> Therefore, I cannot be at the, I cannot be the face of organization forever. forever. It doesn't even make sense. Mm. Of course, I'll always be involved. Mm. I'll always be involved in this in, 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 yeah, yeah. strategy and things like that. And I'll be a great friend of the foundation. But as Michelle of Mom Take Care, I have to be who I am. And mm -hmm. who I am today is somebody who is so passionate about the social conversation around disability rights. Mm -hmm. So even when I decided to now write, to take my authorship more seriously, so because it is who I aim to be even when I leave Malenga Foundation. Mm -hmm. okay. I, I aim to continue writing books challenging the social narrative around mm. disability rights. So I will still be married to my language in some way mm. related to it, but I want to be able to even say things that, you know, my language foundation is like, what? Mm. You know? <laughs> so things this is like a that. very big step yes. for you. Yes. Mm -hmm. So ARA. In terms of living who you are. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So ARA was my passion. I wrote it during the lockdown, mm -hmm. the first lockdown. I actually a little bit before, just a little bit before we locked down. In the lockdown, I did started. a lot of editing. I did a, I did editing. Okay. I did everything myself.